This show contains movie spoilers and swearing. My name is Julius, and I'm your twin brother. Oh, obviously. The moment I sat down, I thought I was looking into a mirror. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode I'm going to take you guys back to the year in 1988 to look at this uh, comedy classic I suppose you could say. It's uh, Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito and joining me for the show today, I couldn't think of anybody better and it's great to have him back, is uh, Dan Bone. Dan, welcome back to Bite Size Cinema mate. It's good to be back. It's very good to be back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been a long time coming. It certainly has been, mate. Yeah. Now, you chose this (laughs) film today, obviously, because you've been away and you've become a dad. So, it's some exciting times for you. It is. Very exciting times. Believe it or not, they're almost six months now. Uh, That's how long I've been out of the game. My God, is that really Um, how long it's been? Jeez. Yeah, uh, they're about a week away as we record this from being six months old so right. pretty crazy stuff but um yeah we couldn't i mean we joked about this when mm. waiting before alice had the babies we, did. we said you know i'm yeah. probably gonna take a few months off we've got to come back to this one when i come back <laughs> on to your show we've got to do twins yeah. i'm thankful to report that neither one of my twins looks like danny devito uh-huh. uh maybe at the moment Jack's probably about the same height as Danny DeVito mm-hmm. um, but neither one of them looks like Arnie either so you know we've got a boy and a girl not two boys like, <clears> like in this movie they haven't come out of a blonde mullet like Arnie or Danny, De- <laughs> oh, Danny yeah. DeVito's little 1980s uh, ponytail <laughs> oh these horrible ponytails that people had in the 80s when they were bold on top with a little ponytail on the back <laughs> Reminds me of the ice cream guy on uh, Phantasm a little bit, you know? Oh, Dan, you know what I mean? <laughs> you just walk, walked over my grave, mate, do you know what I mean? Because I was thinking that today, because I watched it today. And I thought, bloody hell, it's Reggie Bannister. <laughs> it is Reggie. That's it, Reggie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, listen, um, <laughs> before we get back into Twins, I know, you know, you become a dad, you've been busy and everything, but... Um, I've noticed that you posted some stuff on Facebook where you've been watching a few movies here and there in between times. So is there anything new that you've watched that you want to tell us about? Uh, well, I'm a bit behind on some of the stuff, but I managed mm-hmm. to catch up on a few bits and bobs. I managed to finally get around to watching Black Widow, oh, yeah. uh, the, the Marvel <laughs> Disney movie. I'm still um, behind on that. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's on Disney+. Plus. It's the first time, really, I've not... I, I, pride myself on trying to watch all the marvel movies at the cinema but mm. i miss shang chi i've probably missed eternals and i certainly miss black widow because of the, the pandemic yeah but um that was good uh, i really enjoyed it um it's a bit of a weird one because it's like a prequel but there's some really funny moments in it um but to be honest with you i've just been like because i i time is a bit precious at the moment because we're getting the babies into a routine yeah um so I've just been putting on stuff I know I can sit back and enjoy. So I've been watching like the Rush Hour movies. Oh yeah, you mentioned uh, that to me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, that's some great <laughs> movies. Obviously, I recently finally got back to record my own shows episode, yeah. a podcast on Haunted Hill. We we managed to talk about Tarantino. So mm, I watched awesome. the Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction for that. Um, the other night I needed to throw on a, a comfort blanket, so I put on our favourite. Big Trouble in Little China. Ooh, Jack Burton. <laughs> Jack Burton. <laughs> You're not put on this earth to get it, Mr. Burton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, and I've been very lucky, actually. In the six months while I was kind of not mm. recording and not reviewing films, Netflix dropped two, not one, but two mm. He-Man series. All right. Um. One of them is written and produced by Kevin Smith, of all people. So it's yeah. very adult. Um, 
and it kind of follows on from the 80s one but everyone's sort of a bit older now and right. people get killed and but uh it's got, it got a lot of flack but part part two came out last week and i re- i really enjoyed it and then the other he-man show that came out is like one that's aimed at like five-year-old kids oh is it oh, or me. Right. Okay. i didn't know there was another <laughs> one that came out all right yeah there's another one it's kind of aimed at like five-year-old well i'd say like five to ten year olds but i kind of enjoy it oh. it's very it's harmless stuff really. i was just gonna say dan i'll probably get that one more than the other one if you know what i mean if it's aimed towards five-year-old kids <laughs> <laughs> it's he-man with a big sword fight skeletal, you know that, that's all you need isn't it really oh mate that's all you do need um the one that i watched i think you've watched it as well and it really blew me away i really enjoyed it, it was um midnight mass uh, I didn't get around to watch that yet. Um, oh, right, that's okay, the won't... series, isn't it? Yeah, and I I know it's on my list, and I Ooh. definitely want to watch it. Cool, oh, I enjoyed that. Yeah, it's again, it's one of those ones that you can't talk about unless you're going to spoil it. So I won't. But the only thing I will say is it reminded me hell of a lot of um, the fog. You know, John oh really? Does the fog? It just kind of had that sort of aesthetic, but that's not spoiling it either. It's just that sort of. I think Gav would probably like it because it's for it's sort of like. Um, isolation and i know i know he loves anything to do with that so uh. funnily enough the fog was the my final movie i watched for october yeah. um, so i put that on a, just before midnight on halloween with a couple of beers and that was my my final film to round up my halloween season hell of so a movie absolutely love the fog. great movie hell absolutely. of a movie um i just went up to um whitby uh with becky on just oh. a little bit of a break and my god Along the coastline there, we found an old lighthouse, and we stayed in a little cottage on a bay. It's Robin Hood's Bay up that way, and it was just like the fog, you know what I mean? Just walking around. God, I felt like Tom Atkins. (laughs) 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 Take that as you will. I felt like Tom Atkins. (laughs) Tom Atkins, what a wonderful, wonderful man. (laughs) Yeah. Just needed some wetty boots to walk around in a pier just to sort of find some blokes that got shit faced drunk on a boat. <laughs> he uh, he shows up in so many movies, doesn't he, Tom Atkins? Gotta love him, and yeah, gotta love him. He just yeah, he, uh, he 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 just turns up and he kind of does what he needs to do, doesn't he? You know, what I mean, there's no there's no messing about with Tom. <laughs> he's one of those guys. He's like. Um, I don't know. He's like a fun Charles Bronson. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He's a, he's, he's a hard man, but yep. he's got like a bit of a, a bit of a glint in his eye. Give a little wink. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I would love he's to. A have, um, I've said this. I think I've said this before. Um, I would love to see him in something like Prince of Darkness as a sort of yeah. role. You know, I always thought that he would have been a bit better um, in that, but but I can't. Can't can't diss uh, Prince of Darkness because I think that film's becoming really good now with time. I know we've reviewed that one already, but uh, always cross. I watched up. that one uh, at October as well, um, and the more I watch it, the more I love it, which we, mm. we talked about when we, when yeah. we talked, reviewed it on the show. And yeah. but what I what I do find more the more I watch it is the strange cast. The cast is so odd, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a bunch of people left over from Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> Yes, um, <laughs> and then you've got like Donald Sutherland, um, Donald Pleasant, not Sutherland, he's not in it. Donald mm. Pleasant, it's an odd cast, and then Alice Cooper shows up at one point. I don't know, <laughs> Kill, killing someone with a bicycle frame. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, a oh, <laughs> oh, that bug guy. What movie? I mean, just I, I know we've covered this movie, haven't we, on the one with Ricky Morgan, wasn't it? But. You know, you know when it, I think this is the theme of Prince of Is you know when the film's good because you keep talking about it. And yeah, you talk about the scenes ending. like that. Yeah, the ending. The yeah. ending gets under my skin. Yeah, I think about that ending sometimes, and I just think, oh, Christ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good old Donald, <laughs> Donald Pleasant's chucking an axe for a glass pain, isn't it? And oh yeah, no, that's good stuff. But um, we're not here to talk about Prince of Darkness as much as it's a good film or Tom Atkins. Nope. Um, we are here to talk about twins, so should we get into this movie then, Dan? Let's do it. Okay, Let's so... Crack on. You know the drill, listeners. <laughs> you, you probably know what I'm going to say. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's play you a trailer, we'll be back soon. In a secret lab, somewhere in the Western Hemisphere, the perfect human specimen has been born. 
He has the strength of 10 men and the wisdom of 20. He also has a twin brother. I have a brother? Oh my goodness, this is good. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Born to be bad. And Danny DeVito. Way to go, Mom! Are twins. My name is Julius. I'm your twin brother. Obviously. The moment I sat down, I thought I was looking into a mirror. Only their mother can tell them apart. Twin. Twins, the new comedy from Ivan Reitman. Julius. What? What are you, are you allergic to something? You all swelled up. You look like you're ready to explode. I love it when you hit people. Who are you? Vincent's brother. You're twins. That's right. Twins. Coming this Christmas. And welcome back. Uh, so the synopsis of the film is a physically perfect but innocent man goes in search of his long lost twin brother who is short, a womanizer and a small time crook. There you go. Um, if that doesn't blast the 80s, I don't know what is. So. That, that, that could be <laughs> oh, a description of you and our friendship. Yeah. <laughs> what? You're, you're a physically perfect but innocent man and I'm your long lost twin brother ah! who's a short womanizing small time crook. Oh. Is that is that accurate? <laughs> so yeah, I've got to be careful what I say. Here. Does that mean you jump out of windows and walk down the road with a razor, you know, electric razor from the eighties, and you got yourself a a little ponytail? <laughs> Tonight is your night, bro. Tonight is your night, bro. <laughs> you know what? I watched this um, this afternoon, and bloody hell, I didn't realise that. I've forgotten how eighties this movie is. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's it's one of those '80s movies, and actually, I'd I'd forgot I hadn't watched it for a long time, yeah. and I'd forgotten how. Yeah, you're right, how '80s it is, mm. but also it is so funny. Actually, I'd yeah. forgotten that, and I know a lot of it is nostalgia because this was a family favorite as a child for me growing mm. up. Um, but it's one of those high concept '80s movies, like Big. Or something really like crazy, where something ridiculous happens, mm -hmm. but you just go with it because the script is quite funny. It's mm. got a couple of big stars in it, and you just go along for the ride. And it's ridiculous, but it works so well because ultimately, I think it's got a lot of heart. It has got a lot of heart. This film, yeah, it has. Yeah, I think it's got a lot of heart. It's got um, so it kind of sort of it goes from like I say heart. It's got a good story to it ultimately. It's got a story that make you laugh, um, and then it's got some drama in it where you've kind of got this sort of um, branch of was it Danny DeVito's character who's driving around some technology from NASA, isn't it? And then you've got the dude I think he's yeah. called Webster who looks like Rutger Hewer from the Hitcher, um, trying to sort of locate him, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that bit. I, that bit. Now, with a reviewer's eye, that whole plot feels like it's been stapled on. It feels mm. like they they've got a couple of script pages muddled up from another film, mm. and that went into this film script. Yeah, because it felt a bit weird, but but also they needed a reason to like push the plot forward. Um, but yeah, that 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 was a bit of an odd bit, and then it gives it this whole like. It's kind of like a bit of a like a lethal weapon feel to the end of the movie, really, mm. isn't it? With like. You know, that takes place in that big factory and, you know, they take I out the bad guy and there's yeah, a shootout. Yeah, that's it. And the old, uh, I know we sort of fast forward into the end here now, but you get that sort of, this is probably an 80s thing, isn't it? The only thing you're going to see in the 80s when you take a bad guy out with a load of chains. Just oh, that's ridiculous, isn't it? I, I wrote that in my notes. It's like, that chain just goes on and on and on. And you get that in so many films, whether it's like, somebody gets hit by a bag of sand or a bag of flour or cement and it just yeah. carries on going and going and going again until just their head's sticking out the top, like yeah. Tom and Jerry. <laughs> but no, yeah, exactly, yeah, and I think you're right with the lethal weapon. I think it's lethal weapon too where they're fighting the South Africans, aren't they, in the dock? 
Yeah. And I even think Riggs uh, drops a container onto someone, I think. Uh, something like I'm that, sure Jackie it? Chan's done it to somebody Jackie as well. Chan's I, I think it, it's yeah. quite a, a good thing to do in the 80s. Look out, if you're if you're in a fantasy um, film, look out for quicksand. <laughs> if you're in if you're in a, a an LA based film that's got like crime bosses in it, look out for containers or chains that are going to be f- landing on your head. Yeah. yeah, that's the rules. Yeah, you can imagine, can you? The producers and directors sort of saying, "I need someone to be you know, like squashed by something." <laughs> See, eighties <80s>, man, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's what I've also realised about this movie is uh, this is mm. Mr. Freeze and the Penguin. Ah, that's a good show. Two actually. Batman yeah. villains. Oh yeah, yeah. When you think uh, about it, ah, that's right. So maybe in an alternative timeline, um, they, they they could have like found out they were twin brothers. The other thing as well, there's a little bit of a because you've just covered this film on your um, show, uh, Pulp Fiction. I what are you going to say? Oh, God. Jules and Vince. I know. Ah, there you go. So, so for your listeners, Arnie, uh, his character is Julius or Jules Benedict mm. and his brother Danny DeVito is Vince or Vincent. So, yeah, Jules and Vince, as in Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta. Now, this then made my brain mm. go on a massive tangent and I was laughing my ass off to myself thinking how funny or how weird Pulp Fiction would be if it was Arnie and Samuel L. Jackson I'm sorry, Arnie and Danny DeVito playing those two characters. Yeah. Can you imagine oh that? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call Ray I would choose? Wow. <laughs> A big kahuna burger. <laughs> 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 I think oh, that'd be hilarious. Uh, d- Danny, Danny DeVito. Oh, my God, in Pulp Fiction. Could you imagine that? Oh, dear. I could actually. And, you, and you know... They they always predict the future in this as well. Going back to Batman, because there's a little bit where Arnie says, "Do I look cool?" Oh, and he says, yeah. "You look you look like Mr. Ice." Oh. And I thought, "Whoa, he plays Mr. Freeze in the future. That's weird." Yeah, didn't it? I mean, that's happened a few times. Um, well, no, you've said it a few times on your show with stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's weird, isn't it? Things you notice stuff. Um, but then, you know, let's talk about Danny DeVito and Schwarzenegger. Now, these two guys are uh, top of their game, aren't they, really, in the 80s? Uh, Schwarzenegger's just, just gone through the roof as an A-lister, and he, you know, the Terminator. Uh, His name Predator. on any movie poster oh. will sell the tickets at this point. You know, late 80s, he's been knocking them out of the park, loads of action films, but he decided, I want to try something funny. Mm. You know, he wanted to do something different, and... and Fair play to him. I thought yeah. he was hilarious at yeah. this. Yeah, because I mean, I'd say the film did really well at the time. I mean, I remember it coming out because I used to live across the, uh, the road from the cinema, so I saw the poster. Um, but it, it, it made a whole ton of money. Um, but that's beside the point. I mean, it's just a good film. Um, and then obviously, just going back to Danny DeVito. I mean, I've always been a fan of his. Um, going back to Romance in the Stone. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he plays. I think he plays a character called Ralph or something like that. And, and and the funny thing is, in that he's got a cousin called Ira, who looks nothing like oh. him. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying you look like your cousins, but in that film, oh Ira, Ira, come back for me. You know, so I will come back for you. Don't worry. You know, it's like shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but he looks nothing like his cousin. Do you know what I mean? It's just uh, there's almost like a little bit of a glimpse into the future you're going to play that type of ca- character again in the future you know um but yeah no it's it, I, the other thing i was going to say here as well i didn't know this i was, I was looking at the trivia and um apparently there was going to, it's going to be hulk hogan and christopher lloyd christopher lloyd yeah you know, <laughs> it's like wow <laughs> yeah because uh, arnie was given the choice to pick from one of two scripts Mm. they said you can do you can do suburban commando where you play an alien that comes down to earth yeah and danny devito will be the 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 husband of the family that you live with and will help you with your mission or you can be you can do twins so they chose twins which meant hulk hogan and christopher lloyd ended up making suburban commando it's so weird how things yeah work out really yeah, I mean, like Strange. I say, I mean, obviously, Suburban Commando didn't do very well, did it? I think it's almost sort of seen upon as a bit of a, uh, 
I don't know, like a bit of a straight to sort of video sort of release. Yeah, I, I watched it harsh, again it? probably about a year ago, and it, it again, I've got a bit of nostalgia for it because we used yeah. to rent it out a few times. But to be honest with you, Hulk Hogan was never really a very good actor, and any movies he showed up in weren't very good usually. Mm. <laughs> you know what you were getting with Hulk Hogan movies. Would have been interesting, <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. It's Hulk Hogan, man, you know, he's, he's a successful guy in his own right, but I think, like you say, acting, um, it, it, like you say, I think at the same time, I've got to justify a little bit for Suburban Commando, I guess. Um, it's a fun movie, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. there's a bit of nostalgia there. Well, what other movie, movie are you going to find? Christopher Lloyd with uh, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you know? I know. that. There's one bit in that movie that, makes me laugh so much and there's just a bit where um somebody says to christopher lloyd what why did you why did you not say no and he says look at the size of him he's enormous <laughs> and just, just the way he delivers the line it just made makes me laugh every single time mm, uh, yeah. i don't know it's just funny yeah it's some unusual Good chemistry on that on that note though christopher lloyd he went from doc brown successfully didn't he to suburban commando to then playing Switchblade Sam in Dennis the Menace. <laughs> Switchblade Sam. <laughs> Farts his way through the the end of that movie, if I remember rightly. Yeah. <laughs> He's, yes. And, and obviously the bad guy, he, he framed Roger Rabbit as well, to mention. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, so good you he's good so, in that. He's good in that. Do you think that um, Arnie and Danny had good chemistry in this then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It works really well, doesn't it? Because oh, God, yeah. you got you got your usual, um, you know, it's the same thing with these movies. We've seen it a million times. They hate each other to begin with, or one of them loves the other one, but the other one doesn't believe. You know, obviously Danny DeVito does not believe that he could be twin brothers with this guy. Yeah. It takes ages and ages and ages. They slowly warm to each other, and then there's a spanner in the works, and then at the end it all comes together okay. It's the same journey we go on with these sort of characters whether it's a buddy cop movie yeah. a road trip or this kind of mismatched pairing but it always works and we all know always know it's going to work out right in the end um and they go on a, they actually do a bit of a road trip that that's the bit where it gets really fun doesn't it where they go on a bit of a road trip here with the girls yes that's right yeah that's right because he meets um obviously is it uh, linda yeah Playboy. that's danny's beat his girlfriend linda chloe who, webb isn't it um, she was in um, Ghostbusters 2. She's the woman who says she's abducted by yeah. aliens <laughs> <laughs> and was bought it. drinks for them. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Because <laughs> like, again, this is, a, this is an Ivan Reitman movie, isn't it? I've, it I is, it is. Yeah, we should mention Reitman. that. Yeah. Um, so it's obviously a little bit of a cameo there. Because I think... Oh, hang on a second. No, because Ghostbusters 2 didn't come out till... A year after oh yeah, that would have been about a year after this. Uh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, and then of course you have got Kelly Preston in this as well. Oh, unfortunately. Um, let me stop you there. Oh. Let's just take a moment for Kelly Preston. Oh God, yeah. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Good Lord. Now I would have been about eleven or twelve when I saw this film. Mm. This film changed me. <laughs> the, the one scene in particular. Mm. You know, I'm not going to get smutty, but there's yeah. a scene where she's trying to seduce Arnie. Yeah. And, it, and you think to yourself, now I heard you mention, uh, I listened to your uh, review of Kroll. Oh, yeah. Uh, hmm. And you mentioned about pushing that PG-13 or that PG rating. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. That, this scene with Kelly Preston in that pretty much no underwear. Like, mm. how they got away with putting this in a PG movie? Because it's very 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 rude and very suggestive oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> uh, and what's even funnier about the whole story is that arnie is supposedly this virgin you know and he's does he's very nervous about being with a woman and she's really trying to seduce it and it's just so funny and i think this might have been one of the films this and monster squad I learned what it, what a virgin was, I think, at a very young age because of these two movies. <laughs> I know what you mean. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'll, I'll be sticking my head under a pillow at that moment as well. <laughs> <laughs> God Almighty! I can just hear Gary Hill now if he was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she's she's stunning in this film, isn't she? I mean, God, absolutely. And obviously, she's married to John Travolta. You know, yeah. in her life. Um, 
So, so you know, he, he he did all right there. And there's your other connection to Pulp Fiction, I suppose. It's a <laughs> yeah, bunch of old there. yeah. There's, there's, the other, there's another tie in there with that. Um, now that's kind of thrown me off a little bit. Of that. <laughs> that sorry, that, that's making you think about Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston <laughs> in a little silky white nighty, <laughs> trying to seduce the honey. <laughs> And that's the other thing, I suppose, whilst we've got Arnie in his underpants, it's funny when uh, Danny DeVito's character comes out, doesn't he, Vince, and he says, oh my God, you got bumps all over your body. <laughs> <laughs> says, are you unwell? <laughs> yeah. He is absolutely huge in this, though, isn't he, Arnie? Again, you know, this is, he's right in his prime, and obviously they're going to get him to take his shirt off once or twice. Yeah. He's just absolutely huge. And next to Danny DeVito, who is really tiny anyway, it just makes for a really funny pairing. Yeah. Um, they really play off each other. You know, even that, that famous scene where they, they buy the suits, the matching suits, and Arnie swings his jacket and it sort of skims over the top of Danny DeVito's head. Yeah. And they walk down the street being all cool together. It's just got some really funny classic moments in this. And then talking about some scenes, going back to the beginning, I like it when he gets into... He's on that little island, doesn't he? And he gets into the um, little dinghy. Yeah. And he's got to row 26 miles, but he's just rowing, isn't he? Like, he's doing about sort of 26 knots an hour or something like that, you know. Yeah. And that kind of reminded me a little he bit. Says, of- <laughs> <laughs> he says, it, the nearest airport is 26 miles away. And he's like, I don't care. I've got to do him, brother. I've got to go find him. <laughs> 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 <He's> just, <Yeah. laughs> just gets got- those off rowing his boat. Yeah. And then, obviously, when he gets into... Um, where is it, by? Where is it? Is it in Los Angeles? It's Hollywood, isn't it? Yeah, LA. Yeah, LA. Um, you know, he's, he, and again, you got to remember, like, I suppose, you know, Arnie's been Dutch Schaefer, you know, Predator and Terminator and that, and he's walking around. He's so sort of nice, isn't he? And then he gets those two robbers come up to him, doesn't he? And he's like, hey, man, what are you doing? And he's like... <laughs> and then that dude comes along, doesn't he, on a bike, and he just, like, swings him off the bike. And he's like, great. Yeah. Oh. Well, he's looking in that window at that lingerie, and he's like, "Do women? Do women really wear this?" And yeah. the guy's like, "You better believe it, buddy. If you play your cards right." But he's distracting him because his buddy comes up behind them on a motorcycle, grabs Arnie's sort of bag, but obviously he doesn't let go of it, and uh, he falls back, cracks his head open on the pavement. Yeah. And he says, "What did you do to my friend?" And he said, "I did nothing. The pavement was his enemy." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of um, Crocodile Dundee as well. Where you got Fish out of water. Yeah, someone yeah. who's, you know, out of their depth, but they still hold their own in that environment, you know, and it's, uh, it, it works with comedy. I'm a sucker best. for a fish out of water comedy. You know, mm. Rush Hour is a really good one for me. Jackie Chan, you know, Chinese guy in LA, doesn't have a clue what's going on, yeah. but you can't mess with him because he's Jackie Chan. And same with here, Arnie. And not only is Arnie massive you know and strong in this he's also incredibly intelligent he's read every book there is he knows every what about medical you know medicine and, yeah. and physical physical stuff you know he checks the guy he says oh you've got a concussion you know and I'll, I'll carry you to a hospital yeah, <laughs> the guy's it, like yeah. no just yeah. leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> and uh and then you've got the next scene where obviously he finds, finds his brother didn't he, in jail obviously Danny DeVito has yeah. been banged up and he yeah. And this is a scene where I've recited these words before to, in conversation to people. I can't remember when, but I've come out and said, oh, yeah, sure. You know, when I look at you, I feel like I'm looking in a mirror or something like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I just think it's just such a great line. You know, I'm your brother. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. And, you know, he's got to convince him um, that he's his twin brother. And as far as he knows, Danny Vita knows his mother died. Uh, you know, uh, oh, no, his mother abandoned him. Or, no, she's dead. They both think their mother's dead. Um, mm. And of course, do you remember who plays their mother in the flashback at the beginning? Heather Graham, is that right? It was, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that um, until this no. time around. Yeah, she, she just plays the young version of their mum in the flashback, which is interesting. She's another hot um, <laughs> Heather Graham. Roller girl in mm. Boogie Nights. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> sp- sp- is it Spy Shag me as well she was in? She was. She plays... Um, uh, not Felicity Shagwell. Um, that was um, uh, it's been a long time I can't remember what her character is called now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, because I <laughs> sort of skipped past that bit. What does he call it? Um, 
because I thought this, you know, when they've sort of got all the um, fathers there, you know, one of them's strong, one of them's a scientist, intelligence, and all this sort of stuff. And it was, was he call it sort of milkshake sperm? <laughs> Danny like DeVito, that. when he's being told the story by Arnie, he says, Are you telling me that there is a big sperm milkshake? Yeah, that's He does it, a very yeah. vulgar movement <laughs> and thrusts his hips. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a bit um, gross, really. Um, and, but this is like where him and Arnie start bonding, you know, because they yeah. realize they do. They share a lot of mannerisms. They scratch each other's. They scratch their butt, and the other one scratches their butt at the same time. Or, you know, they'll sneeze at the same time, and um, and they do start bonding. You know, they have. He introduces Arnie to microwave lasagna. Yeah. Um, and they they sort of he enjoys that, and he they says, really get to know each other. Arnie comes out, and goes, watch, watch out. Uh... Is it pasta? My stomach is coming for you, or something like that, isn't it? <laughs> I think I think Danny DeVito says. Uh, through the uh, into the lips and over the gums, and then Arnie says, "Watch out, stomach heated gums." Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think it's uh, things like that that just make this film, you know. And I sometimes wonder it, 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 is stuff like that just ad libbed, you know? Is it just Arnie just or was it just say this, you know? And, yeah, keep rolling, <laughs> keep it in there. I'd, I'd yeah. love to have seen the, the point where they got to this bit in the script and said, okay, so this is the scene now where Arnie and Danny, you're going to do some line dancing. Mm. Um, so let's do. That. And then there's, there's a line dancing scene, isn't there, in this movie where they go out to a, a country and western bar. On, the, on a double date with their girls and they end up doing this like crazy choreographed line dancing session and yeah. you're like what am I watching what is going on here this is crazy <laughs> that's, that's, and this kind of goes back to what we said earlier isn't it you get, you've got line dancing you go on an island and then you've got the sort of lethal weapon scene at the end isn't it it kind of goes in different yeah. sort of directions um, and then you've got little bits like Danny DeVito wondering saying to Arnie oh, how are we going to get into this car and then Danny DeVito's like, mm, hang on a second, I've got an idea. And he's got this machine, he? like <laughs> 80s like <laughs> contraption that's going to help you steal a car. <laughs> Dunk. That's okay. Oh, yeah. And and so Arnie lifts up the car to set the alarm, stop the alarm from going off. Yeah. yeah. Just to show how strong he is. <laughs> um, that's where Arnie then gets to drive for the first time. That's easy. Oh, just quite, reading a quite book. Badly. I'm reading a book on how to drive a car. <laughs> That's it. And then he tells people <laughs> as he's driving along, he says, I've already been driving an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, that oh. bit where the car's up on two wheels, where he accidentally flips up onto the two wheels, mm. um, but the bit, the close up of Arnie's face, where he's like grinning his <laughs> yes. head off, yeah, yeah. that was actually his real reaction because he was in a stunt car with oh, the driver right. driving it. Yeah, yeah. So that was his real excitement on his face that, um. that, that they were on two wheels like that. They kept it in the movie. Okay. Pretty funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's it. That's the other thing as well, isn't it? Um, the old car turning up on its side on two wheels. That was a bit of a eighties stunt, wasn't it? I think they used that a couple of times in James Bond. Um, I think everybody in the Cannibal Run does that at some point. Don't Cannibal they? Run. That was it. Yeah, that was the other <laughs> one, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. Let's put it up on two wheels. You know. Yeah. For no reason. <laughs> Um, mm. I'm a big fan of um, the um, what are they called the bad guys in this the Klein brothers the, the Klein bro- boys Klein brothers? that's yeah, it Klein brothers yeah yeah they're great because they keep showing up and they're a bit like the baddies from Dumb and Dumber but they're a bit more um, they're a bit more evil really yeah. but every time they show up Arnie dispatches them with the greatest of ease doesn't he yeah because I thought it was um, the wrestling uh, duo the Bushwhackers or something like that you know. You know? Just, but it's not. I, don't I think, think they're in is. Suburban Commando, aren't they? Aren't they in? I think so. Or is yeah. it the Undertaker or somebody that's in that? Oh, the Undertaker's in there, isn't he? The, the yeah, he's an alien in, that's chasing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know a couple of these guys make cameos, but yeah, it's because um, he meets one of those brothers, doesn't he? Going back to uh, when he's trying to convince um, Danny DeVito that he's his twin brother, and then obviously one of, one of them turns up in the lift, doesn't he? and he. And he ends up, like you say, smacking him around. You know, he says to him, "You forgot the first rule in a crisis situation. Yeah, you move it. too soon." <laughs> and then he's got these rules. He's like Robocop with his three rules. You know, yeah. you move too soon. Um, don't um, don't bluff because you'll have your bluff called. And he's got another rule. I can't remember what it is, but yeah, whenever he, he fights these people, he's like he uses his mind against them before his body because he's you know 
these braves on this island to do everything perfectly. It's so funny. But he dispatches all of these guys, even when they pull a gun on the two girls in the in the line dancing club and you think they're outnumbered because a few more of their cousins show up arnie still kicks about five of their asses mm. it's hilarious yeah he it's does so that funny. um this is where because i find he goes into di- different characters to what he's played in other films so there he kind of reminds me of conan i mean conan's yeah. kind of gone yeah like this you know <laughs> and he's just like smacked someone isn't he? and like welding a sword or something like that, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's, and then uh, and then he tells um, later on, doesn't he? Because he finds the doctor um, that basically covered this whole thing up between him and his brother, wasn't it? And then he comes out That's and right. says, "I'll be back." You know, he says he does. Says, he says, "If you're lying to me, I'll be back." Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's so good that he yeah, says that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm yeah, because the, the the doctor sort of reveals to them that their mother is actually still alive, yeah. Um, which is a revelation. So they want to go and so that sort of is it's, it's a weird double plot because one of the plots is this car that Danny DeVito has stolen has accidentally got a, an experimental jet engine in the boot. That's yeah. Been, so a, some hitman is chasing them down that they don't know about, but at the same time they're on a mission just to go and meet their mum. Um, and like try and be a family again because they've really bonded by now. Mm. And they get to this um, sanctuary place and they get told their mum is dead and actually she's not, um, which is a very lovely ending to the movie actually. But so they they're very sad and they get a bit you know depressed about it all and everything. But then obviously the hitman shows up, puts them in jeopardy, and through danger they become you know this dangerous situation. They they become ever closer because they've escaped death together. And then mm. the very end of the movie, you obviously their mum shows up again and it i was actually quite moved on a couple of scenes in this actually and we talk about this all the time you, you told me if you think you cry a lot and i damn wait I'm till you have kids you. you're gonna cry yeah. even more <laughs> <laughs> but there was there was a couple of scenes in this that made me get a bit teary there's one bit mm. where um uh vincent danny devito is very very sad and arnie says look when we find mama we can all live together as a family yeah. and you'll be welcome any time, even if you've been a bad boy, and I don't know why, but the delivery of that was just mm. so touching. I thought uh, that's really cute. <laughs> welcome to parenthood, Dan. Do you know what I mean? It just <laughs> touches you, man. Yeah, you find yourself crying in some yeah strange places. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Now I'll put my hand up to that all day long. Um, but yeah, no, it's. I think it kind of goes back to what we said earlier with the format of. So you know. It's an 80s movie, so let's talk about 80s movies. They kind of did this, didn't they? Like what you just said there. It's like um, Planes, Trains and Automobiles. It's a comedy, do you know what I mean? And you're laughing your socks off. And if you say to anybody, Trains, Planes and Automobiles, people will come out and say, oh yeah, the shower curtain rings, you know. The bit where he gets punched (laughs) in the nads and falls down on the floor and they find themselves in bed together, you know, in a hotel room and stuff. (laughs) But then the other part of it is like, you then got a story where you find out that Del Griffith's wife's died. You know, sorry for spoiling yeah. a thirty-four year old movie to anybody who hasn't seen it, but I think films like that, comedy films like that in the eighties kind of did that, didn't they? Kind of had you laughing to the point where you sort of like getting stitches and then to a point where you're like crying over these characters, aren't you thinking, oh my god, well, it, so it was funny. almost like the original plot twist, wasn't it? You know, yeah. and I know there's obviously been plot twists before someone like Shyamalan, but mm. you watch Plane Trains and Automobiles, the first time you'd ever seen it, you just think it's a silly comedy. Yeah. And it's not until the very end that you realise that John Candy's actually covering up all this incredible pain yeah. and yeah. and sadness. Yeah. And it, it cuts you so deep at the end with that song that comes on. Steve Martin welcomes him to his home, you know, with his family for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You go back and watch it again, and you then you look at that film differently. You think all the way through, you think, oh, man, this poor guy is masking all his pain with all Mm. this comedy and all this Mm. confidence, you know. It's definitely um, like that. I must admit, again, I I, I must admit, I do have a little bit of a tear at the end of um, Plain Strains and All My Bills, because I think it's just pure, it's almost like pure sort of love and friendship that they find at the end of it, you know, and it's kind of nice. And um, I don't listen to that Paul Young song every time you go away without thinking of that film, you know, when it comes on the radio. I, you know. I'm exactly the same. Mm. I always think of John Candy's little face. Yeah. Um, you know, smiling and uh, that little <laughs> end scene. Oh, God, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm Steve Martin. Come back, you're messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, segwaying into another Gabble, one gabble. Is... <laughs> yeah. I want a fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, we um we on a side note, we recorded that movie off a of TV when we were younger. Oh yeah, and it was the, the edited for TV version. Oh and yeah, and that was the version which we watched for years and years. And then one point, I think the tape broke or something, or we bought it on VHS, or it was we recorded it again, and it was the uncut version. And yeah. I sat with my mum and dad and my sister, and we watched that uncut version and that scene mm. where he says about twenty f bombs in yeah. about thirty seconds. I was like, oh. Okay. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the other thing. Um, in in this movie and in a lot of eighties movies, a lot to use the word "dickhead," didn't they? <laughs> it's like, you <laughs> they know, it's like, it's like the MPAA can say it's okay to use "dickhead" in a in a movie. It's all right. You've got your PG rating, you know. <laughs> yeah, because Ar- Arnie's learning like slang. You know, like, bullshit walks. Yeah. What? How can bullshit walk? Or he says, the guy's kind of a dickhead. And he's like, a dickhead? No, I don't know what that means, but I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like the, he's like the Terminator, isn't he, in a way? Because the Terminator, he is. In Terminator 2, especially, yeah. he gets taught things. Yeah. Um, like swear words and stuff. So he's kind of a bit like the Terminator in some way. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 when I think about swear words in the movie, it reminds me of um, Robocop. Um, when the... Is it... Um, the bad guy in it, is it Dick Jones, isn't it? Dick again, I think. Mean. Yeah, Dick Jones, yeah. He even called me asshole. <laughs> I know. Well, wow, that's a terrible swear word. I'm sorry that he called you that. You overstepped the mark. <laughs> oh, well. I swear this film's going to heat up a bit. Oh, I can't slag off Robocop. It's a fucking brilliant movie, but there you go. <laughs> Things like that make me laugh in it, so. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's what I love about the 80s, you know what I mean? And I think that's what... Generally, you know, I was watching this film, you know, today before we were recording this show, and I just thought, ah, it's just, you know, it's just, it's, it does everything you want it to do for sort of an hour and 40 minutes, you know. Like you say, you're entertained, you're laughing, it's a good story. Um, and considering I hadn't seen this, I probably mm, haven't watched this for about 10 years, no. it holds up incredibly well. It's on Netflix, which helps, you know, it popped back on Netflix, which I thought was really nice that we talked about covering this. And yeah. it came up on Netflix a few months ago. So I thought, well, this is perfect. Yeah. The other thing, um, and again, this is a lot of 80s movies, me and you are the nostalgia guys when it comes mm. to that. But the other thing that's great about this is the soundtrack is really good to this movie. Uh, Did you yeah. think? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, was it? Bro- so is it brothers or something like that? Yeah, bro- gonna... brother to brother. That's when the montage is on. Yeah. Um, it when, sounds... when Jules is searching for uh, Danny DeVito, he's looking everywhere, and you've got that brother to brother. <laughs> yeah, I should, I'd, I'd have to look up to see who sings that. It kind of sounds like a, sounds a bit like Billy Joel or something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah I thought it was Billy Ocean. I did look Billy it up, Ocean's actually. Um, let me just get out for you uh, cool. so there's the song that I loved at the end called Twins that mm. they play with the end credits which is by Philip Bailey and, and Little Richard right um, but let me find out who sang Brother to Brother probably isn't anybody we've ever heard of now but uh, it's worth doing but yeah, the, the, yeah and again these oh hang on we need to talk about the other song that's in this when Arnie's on the plane as well don't we oh yeah put out the papers in the <laughs> trash <laughs> I've never heard music like this before. Apparently, <laughs> yuck at the yak. <laughs> apparently, uh, Clint Eastwood stepped on set with that as well when he was singing. For some reason, I don't know what it was, but if he's filming another movie on another set, and he come in and said, "Who's that singing?" And it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he just went, "Ah, oh, you're a good singer." <laughs> he probably oh said that as, sort of, a little bit sarcastically or something. I don't know. Um, oh, there's another thing we've got to mention as well. More importantly. Did you notice what was in on the cinema when he's walking down Hollywood Boulevard or wherever it was? Uh, yeah, uh, I think it, it was at Willow that was mm, playing. Yeah, I noticed. I never really... Oh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but um, yeah, Willow was on. And then he, Yeah, that's right. I saw that. And he goes up to Sylvester Stallone's poster, doesn't he, with like... Oh, yeah, Rambo. Rambo he looks, at, he looks yeah. at Rambo's arm and then he pulls his own bicep and goes... <laughs> yeah. And again, I think that's like another sort of, um, you know, the last action hero, isn't it? You know, it's yeah, because those two, Stallone and obviously Schwarzenegger, were the two big movie stars, yeah, yeah. big action stars yeah. in the eighties. So they had this little pretend. 
it was a real rivalry, I suppose, but it was also like it wasn't anything nasty in it. Nah, because nah, nah. yeah, you're right. In 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 um the last action hero, um Stallone was um the Terminator, wasn't he? Yeah, in, they switched it the around, poster. didn't they? Yeah, that was it. Um, and then there's a moment in um Demolition Man where um. He says he asked somebody where something is, and they said, "Oh, it's in the in the President Schwarzenegger Museum." And he said, "They made that guy president." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so they so they they switched that around as well. So there's always a nice little rivalry between those two. Yeah, that's it. And because they, um, I don't know, if it was around about this time that she opened up Planet Hollywood, was it the um, yeah food chain, wasn't it, with Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis and, and Jackie Chan as well uh, at some point joined that as well. Oh, um, did he? I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's where I met. That's one of the places I've met Jackie Chan is in Planet Hollywood in London mm. um, because uh, Shanghai Noon, the premiere of Shanghai Noon was happening and afterwards there was a bit of a press junket in Planet Hollywood so we were all allowed to go and then when all the press stuff we were allowed to hang out with Jackie and some of his crew for a little bit. So, yeah, he, he was one of the, the other extra guys in Planet Hollywood, but the no, main no. guys were Bruce Willis, Stallone, and what a weird thing! Hmm. Like Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. What should we do together? Should we open a gym? Nah, let's open a restaurant. Yeah, because weird. I suppose you know. Look, I mean, I never really thought of it like this before, but with the film that we're talking about, could you imagine that Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Bruce Willis were actually triplets, whether they're actually related? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All the same, but a little bit different. Do you know what I mean? And kind of. Uh, Bruce Willis is kind of like that sort of I want to be like my two other brothers but I'm just not quite there but you know he did die hard yeah. didn't he you know it's, 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 it's just <laughs> there's a food for thought talking of uh, talking of triplets I'm sure you you know that mm. for years they've been trying to make a sequel to this haven't they um, yes yeah, with they have, yeah. uh, Eddie Murphy as the third brother mm. now I think had this, this happened 10 15 years ago you know, this that would have been really good because I think you would have had three guys at the top of their game. Yeah. If you'd have made this like maybe no later than like ninety five. Uh-huh. So Arnie's still bringing in tickets. You know, Danny DeVito's really funny because he went off the the map for a little bit and then now he's back with like um, a few movies and uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, Eddie Murphy was really big in the late eighties as well. So mm-hmm. if you'd have got those three, I think that could have been absolutely hilarious. I really. Yeah. Would yeah. love to have seen that. Um, I mean, I think they put a script together, didn't they? Um, I don't know whether it's going to be greenlit or not, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Like you say, I'm not sure whether you could do that today. Um, you know. So yeah, it's... I don't know if I want to see Arnie uh, like trying to be a big, strong guy because he's, you know, he's an older bloke now. He, mm. he, it's that Harrison Ford Indiana Jones thing, isn't oh, it? Where it's a bit. Give me a story with that. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to get you started but no, <laughs> you know it's that no. kind of thing you know yeah i don't know and danny devito you know he he doesn't really look much different to be honest with you he's kind of stayed looking the same but even eddie murphy is starting to look a bit older now and yeah. i just don't think it would really work he's trying to recapture that magic that i don't think it would work really yeah i mean I, I, it's funny how things are isn't it because it, it, I, I i don't think it would work um but then other things do didn't they like um you know, for example, Cobra Kai. Um, Indeed, then, yeah. I guess you could say that um, those guys still look pretty good, don't they? Do you know, like like Johnny in that. You know, I think he's sort of in his mid fifties, and he's so still he pulls it off. Really well, every good, now and again, and... they they get it right, mm. um, like Cobra Kai. I think I actually watched um, Coming to America. Oh yeah, a few months ago, yeah, yeah. and I thought that was actually not too bad. Right. Um, the movie that I know everyone says gets it right, and I know you've seen it, I haven't seen it yet, it's Ghostbusters Afterlife, oh, and I know everybody says that, that oh, they got that one right oh as well. Oh my god almighty, have you not seen it yet? Not I yet, know, no, no. It, mate, I, I, I think you're going to enjoy it. In fact, yeah, I know I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. I'll put a ten on the table and say you will. It's just... Um, I was kind of watching it through your eyes, if you know what I mean, a little bit. That sounds <laughs> a bit creepy, doesn't it? <laughs> but I, I was thinking, oh, Dan will like this, I'm sure he'll like this film. Yeah. Nine, yeah. Well, I saw that you said you felt it was a bit like um, Goonies meets Cobra Kai. Yeah. 
yeah. meets Stranger Things. Is that yes. what you said? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and you've got me there, really. You've got me there with those three things. It, it was like, for me, it was like um, the best thing that you could do after the 1984 movie without spoiling it. Oh. Um, so, now nah, I can't really say any more, to be honest with you, but I think that's all I'll say. So, it really does complement that film particularly. Um, and then fast forward into this time, and I'll just leave it at that. But it's and good. of course, that I mean, that's yeah. directed by Jason uh, Reitman. And, yeah, did a you great know. job. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I, I know. Oh, I will say. I know there's a lot of people sort of saying, "Oh, you know, it's a bit of a nostalgia fest and all this sort of stuff." But I'll put I'll put this on. The, I'll put this card on the table. I, I wouldn't want it not to be a nostalgia fest. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, all day long because. Cobra Kai is a nostalgia fest and it works so it'd be like making a Back to the Future movie without having anything from the original in it do you know what I mean it just, you're always going to have something from that original no matter what and sometimes doing, it can go it. horribly wrong mm. like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull which yeah. you know I'm it's got some good things in it, but ultimately that film isn't very good at all yeah. and part of the reason for that is they left it too long to make it yes um they should have made, like you said, um, they should have made uh, another Indiana Jones in the 90s. And there was a really, really good story. It's turned into a computer game. It's called Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Yeah. yeah. So the rough synopsis is the Nazis have found a weapon that destroyed Atlantis. And it's like, oh, that's fucking great. Do you know what I mean? Brilliant. <laughs> so, a friend of mine had yeah. that on PC. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember watching him play it mm. a bit. It's quite. It's like a bit of a role-playing game as yeah. well as an action game. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. That would have been my pick. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, like you said, it had some good bits in it. But it just didn't work for some reason. Yeah. Something just... didn't connect, did it? Nope. It just but... didn't connect. I don't know what it was, but it just didn't connect, whatever it was. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see with this new movie, because it's directed by the guy that's done Logan, isn't it? So... Yeah, um, oh. and it's got a great cast in it. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, it's obviously awesome. Harrison Ford as well. But uh, I don't know. We we'll just have to see. I, you know, me. I go. In, I the amount of absolute shit that I watch. I'll go and watch everything and anything. <laughs> so I can't ever say, "Oh, I'm not going to watch that," because I will. If I go and watch Frankenshark, oh, God, then yeah. I'm going to go and watch the new Indiana Jones film. And I, of course, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'll be like Sean Pertwee out Dog Soldiers. I'll keep a I'll keep a very very open mind, lads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it? No, Are you going to tell time then? Yeah, oh, I'll have to count. I have to count, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant movie. Oh dear. So um, yeah, I think that's all we need to talk about with twins, isn't it? Is there anything <laughs> we, we haven't covered? I think we have uh, biceps. Um, Danny DeVito's dodgy ponytail, electric shaver. Um, well, I think this film's got everything. If you're looking for a tick list, it's got a montage. It's got um, ponytails, suits with shoulder pads, drop top cars. Danny DeVito on a Schwarzenegger. But but where this film really does it for me is the end scene where they both have a set of twins each with yeah. their girlfriends. Yeah. Um, it's a bit like that scene at the end of Lethal Weapon four is it where they all have their picture they taken do, yeah number four that's it yeah that's right and that and that means of course that we end on a freeze frame yeah which is <laughs> every good 80s movie should end on a freeze frame of course <laughs> yeah i think they did it with uh three men and a baby as well didn't they that's another one that that, that's a hell of a that's a that's similar that vibe to this film mm. that is very close actually in feeling to this film isn't it it's a bit sickly sweet but funny bit of family drama all mixed in it could it's, it could happen it's not got aliens or anything in it but it's also a little bit silly like would three random men be allowed to look after a, a yeah, baby yeah, that's that just appeared thing, on the it? doorstep that's right. probably not mm. <laughs> put some talcum. not these days anyway <laughs> well no put the talcum powder on a snooker table and it? it just goes everywhere doesn't it <laughs> 
I need to rewatch that at some point. It's a good film. Yeah, it's another good one. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny really because as much as I'm a fan of the '80s, I forget about how much good stuff was made in the '80s, and I've almost forgotten about. Um, But yeah, I love it. I love that decade. So um, yeah, it's a good one. There you go, Dan. So Dan, before we um, close the show, you want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing on Haunted Hills? I know we've just done. Um, Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs was a good episode. Good to have you guys back as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that was our comeback episode after five and a half months of being away. Um, that was brilliant. And the next episode we'll be doing, I know that you're going to be very interested oh, in that actually, because yeah. mm. we're covering two zombie comedies from mm. the 80s. Uh, we're doing Night of the Creeps. Yeah. And um, we are also doing Return of the Living Dead. Love it. Love it. One of my favourite um, 80s movies. I thought they paired says. up well together, yeah. you know. Yeah, I love, I love Return of the Living Dead. Oh, It's good, isn't it? It's good. Just say, it's, uh, just say about it. I don't know. Just, I think it's just feel. I know you guys are going to get into it. From, from my perspective, I think it was just filmmaking at its best. Everybody just... It's almost like guerrilla filmmaking, you know. They just chucked it all in and just did it. Boom. There you go. It's um, it's practical effects, yeah. you know, and it, it it's kind of it it's in that same bucket as um, you know, the Evil Dead Two and all of these movies, you know. It, yeah. But it's also got some incredible effects that, that you would have also seen in some of the um, Romero movies as well. It's just uh, and it's hilarious. It's mm. just so funny, and the soundtrack yeah. is just amazing. I just I listen yeah, to great it. Soundtrack. I listen to it a lot. Um, no, that's good, Dan. That's great, mate. Um, so. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been podcasting an hour. <laughs> oh, I suppose I better close the show. <laughs> <laughs> thanks well, for having me. No, Dan, um, it's, just um, say thank you for having me and thanks for like you know waiting for me to come back <laughs> and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm back now. He's so. back. He's a he's a man. <laughs> he's a man behind the mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. All right, Dan. Well, listen. Um, Oh, should we quickly mention what we're going to do next? Uh, you were talking about Rush Hour, wasn't Ooh. you? Oh, yeah. Uh, please, let's do it. Right. The fastest hands in the east meets the biggest mouth in the west. Oh, let's really, do it. That's a good film, isn't it? Yeah, we need to do it's that. It's really good. I'm glad you mentioned that. I've, I've forgotten about it. I didn't forget about it, but you know what I mean? There's so many things going on in my head to think, oh, we might do this and that. And, but, yeah. All right, Dan. All right. Okay, guys. Well... I hope you enjoyed that episode and like I say it's good to have Mr. Dan Bone back on the show so uh, look out for him coming back for Rush Hour in the future but um, before I close the show a little bit of admin Um, I'm a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network so please go and check out uh, Dan's show with uh, Gav Chucky Still is the podcast on Haunted Hill and um, also check out my other show which is the mystery vault podcast where i talk about all mysteries and unexplained um you can find bite size cinema on spotify itunes several other platforms if you put in bite size cinema podcast into google it takes you somewhere where you can listen to the show and um if you want to contact me if there's any films you want me to review or you want to comment on the show or tell tell me what i forgot to mention with twins <laughs> <laughs> what we've got to mention if there is um that's on facebook so um yeah that's a place to uh contact um and that's it so um as always guys keep it bite size keep it safe and we'll see you soon If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, 
Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.